Hi, this is LJ Bothell, and this is a Microsoft PowerPoint overview of themes. And it's for Windows, but the concepts should be transferable to any operating system. So I've got a slideshow already open. It looks similar to one I've worked on with another video on inserts, but I made a few changes, and now we're going to work with designing it. So in PowerPoint, like in Word and Excel, you have a design type of tab with a ribbon that gives you a chance to apply themes, change themes, look at variants, and do a few other basic things. So first off, let's take a look at the slide size. Slide size is currently set at widescreen. There's two standard slide sizes for uh, PowerPoint, although you could go in and customize to something else if you really wanted to. But this tends to be for what your standard types of laptop and desktop computer screens will uh, hold. So I'm going to leave this at the default, but if you choose to change to a different slide size, you may find the information in your show. Uh, well, let's go ahead and go to standard 4.3. So I'm going to click over to the third slide here so we can see if there are differences and what happens. I'm going to select this, and now the slide is smaller and shaped a little differently, and the items are approximately the same size. They were resized a little bit, but if I decide to go back to widescreen, notice how things are smaller than they were before. So that you don't really get sort of an apples to apples change of your content within your slideshow when you change the slide size. I'm going to go ahead and undo the last couple of steps I did so that we're back where we started. But it's useful to know about that. I am With themes, you have a variety of themes that are built into Microsoft Office. The Macs will not have some of these themes, but may have some other themes to work with. You basically pick anything that looks appealing. I'm just going to pick, oh, maybe this one here. And interestingly, when you pick a theme, the content may change position or size or other things from where it was when it was its default. So let's come back over here. This is the size here. And if I go back and choose this, notice the, the positioning has changed a little bit. And if I were to instead, I'm going to undo this again and choose something that, like this one. This is in actually a pretty good position, but if we come down here, notice how this table is now bounding and possibly covering some of this up. So you may have to, when you change a theme, decide if you um, need to change the placement of some of the items that you have. And you could do that by selecting them and moving them around and so on. Okay, so I'm going to come back here and just choose this theme. And you have then from here, you have some variants you could choose from that use uh, various palettes that are built in. So if you decide you don't really like this green color, even though you like that idea, you can look here and see what you could change, right? Or you could do this, or you could do this. So I'm going to come over here and choose the blue, but I don't really care for those colors right now. It's all right, but... So what you can do is in this variance area, come down and select the color palette and then choose something you like. So maybe I'm in a red and violet mode today, or I'm in an orange red or red orange. <laughs> so let's just choose red. So now if I were to choose this up here again, it would undo what I selected, but it's easy enough to go back and, and choose red again. Just make sure that you don't then go in here and start clicking. These variants are just built in to the theme the way it came. I also could decide that I hate the fonts. So the, the thing I'd be keeping in this theme, you're wondering, well, why not just change the theme altogether? Well, maybe I like the idea of this whole background here and this type of border around these pages, but I just didn't care for the colors and maybe I don't care for the fonts. So with the fonts, I can look over here and get the drop down of a variety of different font types and I can hover over them and get a bit of a preview. Look at what seems readable. So you would probably want to have one of the slides open that shows you what um, you're seeing um, in, in uh, for several things. I'm just going to go ahead and keep it the way it was because it was fine, but that's where I could do that. But the final thing I could do in here is I can, well, one of the other things is I can select a different effect. 
Now, I can't really see what's going to happen to the icon here because it's covered up. But if I were to choose something like grunge or glossy or frosted glass, I would, once I add things, I would have a few different options of how I can make these look, which we'll touch on next. Um, also, let's take a look down here. Background styles. In this particular case, the background styles are offering the way the colors will show up or no background styles, etc. So there's all sorts of customizing capability here. Finally, you can also take a look over here at the designer. The designer um, has no design ideas for this slide. What about this one? So one could actually add in a few other things if you really wanted slide by slide. So if I were to say, well, I like this red look, I could do this. That's, that's an idea. It doesn't have coffee cups on it, but it'll do for the moment. So that's how that works. So now let's come back over here and take a look at how we can make some changes. Um, let's go in here. You can still come in here and change the color of things, although it's not really a good idea if you have a theme. But let's take a look at the icon here and go to the graphics format and see what types of effects we can get, if any. Oh, we can get a complete outline. We can look at graphics effects. And now we'll start seeing some interesting things that we could do in here. Let's do soft edges and then do this one. Well, the thing is there's no edges on here because we haven't actually made any. So what we want to do is take, well, let's see, we should be able to do something here. How interesting. So what I'm going to do is, oh, we're getting a little bit of shadow here, but it's really, it's really minor. So I would probably have to, to look and see what else might work. Let's see, I wanted, I wanted shadow that would, uh, you can see just a little bit of shadow there. But what I was wondering is where we can see some of those effects like the grunge. Okay, down here, it's a little hard to tell with a solid color, but there's a little bit of grunginess in here. So what I'm going to do is actually pick some sort of different image. Let's see if we can get something that's a little bit more, oh, there's a caramel macchiato. Let's stick that in here. I'm going to make it wide just for kick so it stands out more. It's awful. But you can click on an image. You can come up and you can crop it. You can change the size of it. And then what I want to do is see for the effects. We could do a shadow of the image. We've got a little shadow down there. Let's see what artistic effects. Oh, look at all these artistic effects we can do. And then picture layout. We can, oop, no, we don't want to do that. But what I was hoping was to see some of the grunginess that we selected. So this is one of those things you're going to have to just play with a little bit because right now, you know, picture effects will give you a few things that you could do, but until you play with them and see what you like, you're not really sure what you're going to get. One thing I will note is you should always put alt text in your images. And in this case, this is something that would be for a screen reader to be able to see and tell a person what an image is supposed to be. So we will... See, this is an image of Starbucks caramel caramel okay and so now we have have that so anyway that's just a little bit about how the themes and the design and the slide size works I hope this was helpful to you thank you